Hello, I just got back for a quick video to teach you how to assign symbols for elements. Let us straight come to it. The first thing that we know about an atom or an element is its atomic number. The atomic number is represented by the letter Z, capital Z. It means the number of protons in an atom. The number of protons tell you which element is it. It can also be equal to the number of electrons, but only if the atom is neutral. That is, in an atom, the nucleus consists of the protons and the neutrons, but the electrons are around it, which can be lost or gained during chemical reactions. Therefore, the identity, although in a neutral atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons, for an ion, which is formed by either the loss of electrons or the gain of electrons, the number of electrons is not equal to the number of protons. But there is one thing which remains constant in chemical reactions, and that is the number of protons. And hence, the identity of an element is the number of protons in an element, and it's known as its atomic number. Now, atomic number is number of protons which is equal to the number of electrons only if the atom is neutral. The next number that we should know is the mass number. The mass number is represented by the capital letter A and the mass number means the mass in an atom. The mass is all concentrated in the nucleus and it is the sum of the protons and the neutrons and therefore mass number is the sum of atomic number and the number of neutrons. So, all the particles present inside the nucleus give you the mass number. Once you know these two and you know the symbol of the element, the atomic symbol, the, let us say that the symbol is X, then how do you represent an element? You write the symbol of the element, whatever the element, for example, for sodium it is Na, for potassium it is K, for carbon it is C, for hydrogen it is H, for chlorine it is Cl, whatever is the symbol of the element, you write that. The atomic number is written as a subscript and as a prescript. A subscript but it's written before the symbol of the element and A, that is the mass number, is written as the superscript that is above it but both of these are before the symbol of the element this is how we represent an element now there's another thing that we should know before we uh, write the symbols of elements that is the presence of isotopes and isobars i have explained these in one of the previous videos but let me just briefly explain what these are isotopes are atoms of the same element when we say the identity of an element is the number of protons, when I say that they are atoms of the same element, it means that they have the same number of protons. Right? Isotopes are atoms of the same element which have the same atomic number, obviously, because atomic number is the identity of the element, but different mass numbers. What is mass number? Mass number is nothing but the sum of the atomic number and the neutrons. In other words, these are atoms of the same element which have the same number of protons but their number of neutrons is different and that's why they have different number of uh, different mass numbers. For example, we have these three isotopes of hydrogen. 1H1 means there is only one proton and there is no neutron in 1H1. There is one proton and one neutron therefore mass number is 2. There is one proton and there are two neutrons, therefore atomic number is one but mass number is three. So these are isotopes of hydrogen. Isobars on the other hand are atoms of different elements. Why do we say different elements? Which means that their atomic numbers should be different. So they are atoms of different elements, that is they have different atomic numbers which have the same mass. So they have the same mass means that they have the same mass number A. In other words, they are atoms which have in which the sum of the protons and neutrons is equal. They may not be the same number of protons, which means that they are different atoms of different elements and only the sum of their protons and neutrons is the same and hence they are 
they have the same mass and they are known as isobars. For example, carbon has six protons, but it has eight, one of its isotopes has eight uh, neutrons, therefore its mass is 14. And nitrogen has seven protons and seven neutrons, therefore its mass is also 14. But the atomic numbers are six and seven respectively. So when you write isobars, you write the names of the, uh, sorry, the symbols of the elements which they are for. While in isotopes, the symbol would remain the same because they are atoms of the same element. So this was about the different things that you should know before you start solving or trying to represent atoms in this way. Let's do these two problems now. It will clarify how this is done. And it will also, okay, there is another point that you would, I would like you to know. I said that atomic number is equal to the number of protons and number of electrons only if the atom is neutral. But if the atom is uh, an ion, that is if the atom has, in a chemical reaction, has lost electrons, then if it has lost electrons, electrons are negatively charged. If it, let us say it loses uh, in a neutral atom, number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. In a chemical reaction, let us say it had four protons and four uh, electrons. It lost two electrons. If it lost two electrons, now what is the overall charge on the atom? There are two electrons which cancel out two protons but two positive charges are left therefore the remaining atom or the ion is has a charge of two positive similarly if an atom has four protons and four electrons and it gains two electrons then now it has six negative charges but only four positive charges therefore the ion that is formed acquires a charge of two negative why we do not write minus two to avoid confu confusion it's not a numerical quantity two negative means a charge of two but negative charges well now let us come and solve this problem calculate the number of protons neutrons and electrons in 35 bromine 80. if it's 35 bromine 80 we know that what is the number of the, this lower number gives us Z, that is Z. Z is atomic number or number of protons is equal to 35. What, are, what is the number of neutrons? Now, A is the sum of protons and neutrons. Therefore, number of neutrons A, A is equal to z plus n therefore n should be equal to a minus z therefore a is 80 uh -huh. a is 80 minus 35 how much would this be that would be the number of neutrons that is 45 there are 45 neutrons and 35 protons but what is the number of electrons? If the atom is neutral, the number of protons should be equal to the number of neutrons. Uh, sorry, the number of protons should be equal to the number of electrons. Therefore, since the number of protons is 35, we assume the atom to be neutral because there is no charge shown here. Therefore, electrons should also be equal to 35. So that is how from the symbol you can calculate the, the subatomic particles and from subatomic particles you can derive the symbol too. So in this second problem we have been given the subatomic particles and we have to calculate the symbol of the element. Now the question is that the number of electrons, protons is Z and neutrons are 18, 16 and 16 respectively. Assign the proper symbol to the species. We know whatever the species is, first of all to know the symbol of the element, we should know its atomic number because the atomic number is the identity of the element. So what's the atomic number of this? Z gives you the atomic number and Z is 16. If there are, uh, the element let us say, assume right now is X and Z is here and A is here. That is how we represent it. So Z is 16, the element is X for now, 
and A is the sum of the uh, protons and the neutrons. So 16 plus 16 would be 32. All right. So 16 plus 16 is 32. Therefore, this should be our symbol of the elements Z and A is 32 and uh, 16 and 32. What is the 16th element or which element has the atomic number 16? To know this, you usually in chemistry as you study, you learn the elements uh, according to their atomic numbers. They just uh, occur to you. But for now, you may refer to the periodic table and see the 16th element. You'll find that it is uh, sulfur. I'll just tell you hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. That makes it 10 elements. Sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, 15. 16th is sulfur. 17, chlorine, argon, potassium, calcium. They are the first 20 elements. So in, I have learned from that that the 16th element is sulfur and the symbol for sulfur is capital S. Therefore, what should my element be? It should be 16S32. But I have a problem. If it was a neutral atom, the number of protons should have been equal to the number of electrons. But I have been told here in the problem that the number of electrons is 18, which means it is, what is the difference between the protons and uh, electrons minus protons would be equal to 18 minus 16, which is equal to two. Since electrons are in excess, it means there should be negative charge over sulfur. If sulfur gains one electron, it has a charge of one negative. But if it has gained two electrons, it means it has a charge of two negative. Therefore, this symbol would now become, it's not just sulfur 32, it's not a neutral atom. The number of electrons tells us that it has a charge of two negative. So this becomes the representation of our atom as given to us from these details. So you can either find out the subatomic particles from this symbol of an element or if you know the subatomic particles you can write down the symbol for the element and find out which element is the uh, is given in the question thank you for watching